Hey guys, this is TJ Hafer, and today I'm bringing you some gameplay from Crusader Kings 3. I'm playing as uh, Duke Murrah of Munster on I Ireland, uh, which was considered Tutorial Island in Crusader Kings 2, and they've sort of made that official now. This is uh, the character you're supposed to play as uh, for, for first-time players to kind of learn the ropes. Uh, he's the most powerful lord in Ireland at the start of the game in 1066, so he's kind of well set up to... Um, consolidate power and, and form the kingdom. Uh, as you can see, we've got full 3D portraits, uh, which is really cool. This new lifestyle system uh, is sort of a way to bring more RPG mechanics into the game. It's based on the Way of Life expansion for uh, Crusader Kings 2, but it's more fully integrated into the gameplay. Uh, so you can see our, our guy is a skilled tactician, uh, which not only means he's going to be better at leading battles, but also that if we take the martial lifestyle, he's going to gain experience points faster. So uh, your childhood education has an, an effect on um, how well you'll do in each of these. And then you can you know, unlock these perks over time uh, that will give you some pretty cool bonuses. Uh, he's an older character, so he starts with several already unlocked. If you take over as like your 65-year-old uncle... Obviously, he's not going to have to start at the top of the talent tree, which is kind of cool. Uh, so Overseer is more about managing the realm. Strategist is more about leading battles. And then Gallant is sort of like knightly virtue and also being a really good um, personal combat, um, sort of, as opposed to, to like a, a strategic or a tactical leader. Um, so we're going to select a focus here um, that's going to kind of help us manage our realm uh, control and development are uh, sort of how you judge how developed your provinces are and how much of a hold you have over them. Uh, this widget up here, the suggestions widget, is really cool. Um, I think especially for new players it's going to be really helpful because it kind of serves the role of suggesting what you should do in the way that like a friend who had played the game before might... Um, you know, be able to give you some suggestions. Uh, now you'll you'll be able to do that without having, you know me over to your house to tell you how to play Crusader Kings, uh, which I've, I've done for multiple friends in the past. Uh, so we can see this guy who should be part of our realm uh, by de jure. He has a weaker army than us. We have 350 troops. He has about 200. Um, and uh, the suggestion widget is letting us know we can declare war on him because his county... Uh, is rightfully a part of the duchy that we already control, so we don't need to have any other reason to declare war on him other than that. In Crusader Kings, you almost always need a reason to declare war. Um, so we're going to declare war, we're going to raise our troops, they're going to pop up at this rally point. Um, these include peasant levies, but also um, men-at-arms, which are special troop types like heavy infantry and archers. Um, and then also knights, which are individual characters uh, that could go into battle as well, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, all of the uh, the baronies are actually represented on the map as spaces that you can march to. Uh, whereas in Crusader Kings 2, they were just kind of these off-map things that existed within a county, because the county was the smallest subdivision of geography. So we'll try and see if we can catch his army and beat him up, uh, so he doesn't cause problems for our lands while we're sieging down his cap. Uh, castle. Uh, we won pretty decisively here. Uh, we've got a larger army and also a higher quality army, so there's there's not a whole lot he can do here. Um, we captured, I think this is his son? Yeah, so uh, that's, that's a good start to the war. Um, this is one of the new dynamic events, uh, so it looks like, you know, some mercenaries are uh, perhaps causing trouble, and uh, this, uh, our, there's an uh, innkeeper in our realm is asking what we do with them. These will pop up fairly regularly. Um, so we can be generous to the mercenaries, uh, or we can kick them out, which will increase the popular opinion, which is basically what the peasants, what the small folk think of us. So because of the losses we took in that battle, we don't have enough men to take this castle now. So we're going to march back to our own lands so that we can kind of regroup and resupply. Uh, we got another event here, uh, so we've stripped ourselves of our symbols of office, um, and we've heard an infantryman trying to convince his commander of the advantages of an alternate strategy. So we have some different options here that can give us different bonuses or penalties. This will also somewhat depend on the traits of your character, which of these options you have. 
Um, so we're going to gain an innovative strategy for 15 years uh, from listening to uh, one of our soldiers. Still not enough troops to take the cathedral. Um, so this is an event that can happen. One of our bishops in insular Christianity has been uh, recognized as um, a very good priest, and he will increase the fervor of our religion, which kind of makes it so we don't have a lot of heresies, and uh, you know we're seen as um, a morally upstanding faith. Uh, and if you saw my other video, insular Christianity or you know Irish Celtic Christianity is kind of its own thing now. Although this pastoral isolation prevents us from being seen as heretics by Rome, which is nice because they were in communion with the Catholics, but they did kind of have their own way of doing things. Um, if we look over here, there's uh, you know orthodoxy is considered astray by religions in the Catholic group, but we are considered righteous because, you know, even though we have our own religion on the map, um, you know, obviously completely different faiths like Muslim are, are considered evil by our church, uh, as is, is historical. Uh, the various branches of the Abrahamic faiths didn't always get along that well. So if we had a little more time, we could wait for our armies to replenish and take this castle, but I think that's going to do it for today. Check out my other Crusader Kings 3 video about the map, and for everything else Crusader Kings, keep it right here on IGN.